What if that nagging feeling in the back of your neck was real? What if those hands reaching out from the dark that you believed were there, were there? What if the monster in the basement really existed? And what if there was really something under the bed? Would you have the courage to face your fears? Hello, brave souls. Welcome back to the Fear Podcast. In today's episode, we have an original story that I wrote called Do Not Talk to Strangers at Midnight. It's inspired by the uh, actual walks I like to take at night with my dog. Yeah, it's it's one of those things I've always had bouncing around in the back of my mind. Um, If something were to follow me or if there was some kind of entity that would give me a hard time as I was trying to walk. But I really enjoy these walks, so (laughs) without further ado, let's get into Do Not Talk to Strangers at Midnight, written by me. Do not talk to strangers at midnight. Written and narrated by the Fear Podcast. My name is Thomas Jones, and for the past two weeks, I've been terrified to leave my own house. Let me explain. It all started when I started taking more night walks with my dog. I've worked mostly nights since I was a kid, so this really didn't strike me as odd. If anything, I could never be used to going for a walk during the day. Too much sound and too many people. It just always rubbed me the wrong way. Anyways, I usually go for about a 30 to 45 minute walk most nights with my dog. I usually take the same lap around a few blocks and then just come back home the next street over. Well, two weeks ago, I decided to take a different route because the one I had been doing was getting boring and I even think my dog was getting sick of it. So instead of heading north like usual, we ended up heading south towards town. This is usually not a deal because there are a lot more people in that direction. But at the time we were going, it really didn't matter. It is a chilly night, so I'm bundled up and my headphones are in so I can listen to something as I walk. I'm kind of a weirdo, so I tend to listen to something a little spooky to to get my blood pumping as I walk. It adds to the experience of my walk for me. So it isn't unusual for me to get a little spooked out as I walk. On the other route, I normally take, I've seen all the nooks and crannies, so it doesn't really spook me anymore. This was a bit different. I wasn't used to going to this part of town at night, so I was a little nervous. I don't usually see anybody walking around at night on these walks, especially since winter has hit. I made it about 20 minutes of my walk when I caught a glimpse of someone walking into my direction on the same side of the street. I walked on the outside of the snowbank since I had my dog and I didn't want her to jump on them. This person struck me as a bit odd because they were pretty young and were definitely not dressed for the weather. I took out my headphones and asked if they were okay. They didn't respond at all and just stared at me. I asked again but had no luck with the response the second time either. I asked if they needed me to call someone, and for the third time, I got no response. I decided that maybe this was a teenager, and he was too damn cool to talk to me or wear a jacket. I did notice something was a bit strange. My dog wasn't reacting to this person at all. He usually should be hopping around like a jackrabbit trying to get to this person better. The person noticed I'd stopped talking to them, and just continued down the road like I didn't even talk to them at all. I chalked it up to weird stuff happening at night, and continued on with the walk. This was definitely going to be a shorter walk. That kid had kind of freaked me out. I would take the next left of the next road and start working my way back to the house. A minute later, I turned left on the new street and was shocked to see the teen I had seen a minute ago, sitting on a stoop about two houses down the street from me. He stared at me now very intently. Gone was the expressionless look I had received earlier. It felt like he was staring right through me, and if looks could kill, I would be dead on the spot. I moved to the other side of the road because honestly, I couldn't figure out how he beat me over here when he was going the opposite direction. He kept staring at me as I walked by and I was grateful that this was such a short road and that I could take another left and hopefully be done with this odd kid. I could feel his eyes on me as I had my back turned to him and I had goosebumps all over. I had never experienced something this odd in any of the walks I had taken in my life. Also my dog was acting like no one was there and I think that was what freaked me out the most. I made the left and picked up the pace as I made it my way to my house. I figured there was no way this kid could be anywhere on the way. Part of me wasn't really even that surprised when I saw him again. But this time, he had another kid with him, sitting on a swing in a park on the right side of the road. It looked like the kid that was with him was also not dressed well for the weather and was roughly the same age. They both gave me that determined look, but this time they had a little smirk on their face. As if every time they saw me and I saw them, something lit them up. 
I picked up my pace even more and started panting as I was walking. I don't know why I felt like I needed to get home so quickly, but I decided that if I didn't, something bad was going to happen. I thought I could hear someone whispering my name, but couldn't hear well over my heavy breathing. I was officially freaked out and it felt like I was being hunted. I shouldn't have been this freaked out, right? They were just kids. Something about them gave me the creeps and I didn't want to stick around to find out if I was wrong. I didn't dare look behind me for the fear that they would be right behind me with those beady eyes and that smirk. I walked about a quarter mile down the road and looked down an alley, and this time there were about six of them, all roughly the same age and poorly dressed. I barely looked at them this time, but noticed that their smiles were getting wider. I knew I heard one of them yell my name this time. Thomas! I just started running at this point, and as I made my way down the street, I saw them on every stoop gathering more and more kids, their smiles getting larger and larger and larger, yelling my name, Thomas, 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 Thomas. My dog was running with me as I sprinted back to the house, and yet again, she didn't react at all. I don't think she could see them at all. This was getting ridiculous, and I needed to get home now. I was only two houses away now, and my lungs were burning. I was completely spent, and I was just hoping my legs would carry me the rest of the way. One house away, and there must have been about 50 kids at this point all screaming my name, Thomas! They never moved, and their smiles never faltered. It's as if they were screaming directly into my mind. I was hoping I was just going crazy, because there was no way this was happening. I got up to my porch and pulled out my keys and opened the door as fast as I could. I slammed the door shut behind me and ran to the phone. I called 911 because I really thought they were going to break down my door and kill me. As I called them, I ran into my room and grabbed my handgun. If they were going to take me out, I was at least going to take a few along with me. I got on the line with the dispatcher and told her some guys had chased me home and I thought they were going to try and break in. There was no way I was going to tell her what I was actually seeing. I had to have her almost yell because I could still hear them screaming my name as if they were right in my ear. Thomas! I loaded my handgun and the dispatcher said an officer would be there in about a minute. I wasn't even sure if I had that long. I told her I'd be armed and to let the patrol know that so it doesn't shoot me. She said she passed it along and stayed on the phone. I could still hear them scream my name in my ear, and I just buried my head under my pillow because all the screaming was giving me a splitting migraine. Thomas! 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 After about 10 seconds of that, I had to remind myself that I wasn't safe yet. I got up and went heading from the front door. I went downstairs to see if I could still see them through the window. I pulled the curtain back slowly and was surprised to see that the windows were completely fogged up, like someone had been breathing directly on them. This made it impossible to see out the window, but I thought I could make up the shape of them in the window. The yelling came to a halt, and the sound of silence almost scared me more than the yelling. I finally saw what I was hoping to see. I could see the red and blue of the police cars as they were coming down the road. They pulled up to the house and ran to the front door with their weapons drawn. I put my handgun on the floor so they wouldn't think I was a threat. They knocked on the door, and I answered it. He asked if I was the person that called, and I told him that I was. He asked where the intruders were. I could see the teenagers standing on my lawn, staring at me and pointing out at the lawn. They looked at me compute. They looked at me confused as if they couldn't see what I was seeing. They told me they didn't appreciate being brought out here for a joke. I swore that they were right there on the lawn, and they told me they could clear the house and check the perimeter. I thought to myself that I must be going crazy if these guys can't see these kids. It almost makes more sense this way. I mean, how could this even be possible? Is it more plausible that I'm going crazy? or that these police officers can't see someone standing right there in front of them. The officers went to the house and did a thorough search of my house. All the while, I stayed at the front door, just staring back at the original teenager. He stood just a little ahead of the rest of them. There was a massive circle of them around my house now. I don't think I could see a way out of here. The cops told me they didn't find anything, and they pretty much just accepted that I must have had a nervous breakdown. They told me again that I shouldn't waste their time like this, but if anyone does come and try to break in to call again. I thanked them for their time and went back into my house. As soon as the cops left, the windows cleared up and I could see them all in my windows. I ran to my room and hid under the covers, like I would when I was a kid. I'm not sure when, but at some point I finally fell asleep. When I woke up, I couldn't see any of them in the windows, and there didn't seem to be any sign of the kid. I chalked it up to having have been a bad dream and tried to go on with my day. A few days went by without anything eventful happening. That was until I tried to go for another walk again. This time I went my normal route and went earlier in the night. I didn't see anything until I was about five minutes from coming back to my house. 
That's when I saw him walking on the opposite side of the street. He looked at me with the biggest smile I'd ever seen, and I just ran for my front door. Luckily, this time he didn't run me down, but I felt like I was being watched as I ran home. I haven't left my house since that night. He has been sitting under a tree in front of my house and always seems to know where I am in the house. Because every time I look out the window, he is staring directly at me. I don't know what he wants, but I feel like if I go out there again, I'm not going to make it back. My neighbors don't even seem to notice he is there, because they have walked by him plenty of times and never mentioned anything. I got down to negative two last night, and he just sat there like nothing bothers him. I keep hearing him whisper my name to me, over and over again. Thomas. Thomas. I think he's trying to drive me crazy, or hell, I might already be crazy. I woke up this morning, and of course he was right there waiting for me under that tree like usual. I heard the mailman walking up the driveway and walked up the door to get the mail from him. I couldn't risk going to the mailbox to get it, just in case that was enough for him to get me. I really thought I was nuts until the mailman asked me why there was a kid sitting on my lawn. I was so happy to hear him ask that, and I completely broke down in tears. I told him everything, and he just stood there wild-eyed. He had been seeing the same kid walking around his house as well. I asked him how long ago he had seen him, and he told me it had been about three weeks. He said he was delivering mail late and saw a kid in a similar state as I did, and he relayed a similar story as me except the army of kids and the screaming. He had been seeing this kid every day on his route. He didn't seem worried about it. I told him he should come into the house. He declined my offer and he said he had to finish his route. I watched him walk away and didn't realize it was the last time I would see him alive. I saw in the local news that he had frozen to death while out on his route. It didn't make any sense either because it was a relatively warm winter day. I've come to the conclusion that I only have a week left. He made it about three weeks before the kids got him. I'm hoping if I stay in the house that I won't suffer the same fate. But all I can say is that you should not talk to strangers at midnight, or you might be stuck in the same situation as I am. Wish me luck. Thank you for listening to the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, come back next week for more of these stories. If you'd like to stay updated on what's happening with the podcast, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. I'll have those links in the description. I'll be doing more original stories in the future, but I will start padding the podcast with more uh, stories I find on Reddit too. um, So we can showcase more authors as well. But I appreciate you sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed the story. And remember to always face your fears.